One of the best things about video games is that they allow for a great degree of artistic expression. This sentiment can of course refer to the narrative, but is perhaps even more true when we talk about the art direction and style of a title. Whether it's a smaller game with a very distinct art style, a bigger game with something unique to offer, or something in between, there are many titles that are recognisable just at a glance thanks to their graphics, and for this list, we're looking at those that present players with a memorable, sleek and stylish monochrome world. Now, yes, you could argue that anything released on the earliest consoles and handhelds would qualify for this list, which is why we're making it perfectly clear when we say video games that are black and white, we mean the aesthetic was entirely down to a stylistic choice, not hardware limitations. With that in mind, we've picked 10 of the best intentionally styled, mostly monochromatic games out there. I'm Ashton from Triple Jump, and here are 10 great video games that are black and white, and sometimes red. Number 10. Closure Puzzle platformer Closure presents its monochromatic world in a very special way. With the white and black areas of the screen coinciding with the path the player can traverse and the pits they must avoid, respectively. Players take control of a strange, almost spider like creature and guide them through three sets of levels, each based around a different human character and their own individual story. At the start of each set, the spider creature transforms and explores the factory, forest, or carnival that they find themselves in. Each world relies heavily on light, and the safety traversable platforms are only sparsely illuminated, so players must tread carefully to avoid falling into the dark abyss. There are various devices around the world that can help create paths, such as spotlights, keys and orb pedestals, which will be illuminated in the white glow of light. One advantage is that orbs can be carried, but since they're often left behind in order to link parts of the path together, the player can't rely on them completely. Best watch your step then, otherwise you'll never get any closure to the characters' stories. Number 9. Gatto Roboto Gatto Roboto is a pixel art black and white metroidvania that follows Kiki, a cat in a mech suit, and really, I don't know what more motivation you need to play it than that. As the game starts, Kiki and her owner Gary are in their spaceship going to investigate a distress call. But unfortunately, Kiki, in accurate cat-like fashion, walks across the ship's keyboard, causing it to crash on an alien planet. Gary ends up trapped, but Kiki is able to walk around, so she's tasked with finding a mech suit and exploring the planet to see if she can find some way back, leaving to find the lab they were going to investigate initially. When Kiki is her cat self, she can climb and jump off walls, swim and fit through small gaps, but is very vulnerable. Once she finds the mech suit, acquired at most of the game's save points, she gains a whole load of HP and a gun, and can find other upgrades as she progresses throughout the world. Sometimes she will even find special suit types, such as the submarine or the turret. As she explores, she also finds many voice logs left behind by a mad scientist, and comes face to face with a talking rat, hinting at a larger story than players might have expected. Number 8. Ashen Forest Ashen Forest, not to be confused with either Ashen or The Forest, is an action roguelike with a strong emphasis on bosses and an admittedly huge learning curve. It emulates the Ashen part of the title through its art style, as the grayscale used for this pixelated adventure suggests a foreboding and desiccated atmosphere. The Ashen Forest of the title houses a giant tree, but became consumed by a plague that killed many people and turned any others into monsters after it arrived from the sky. In order to purify the area, players have to fight their way through the forest, and as they progress, their salvation level will increase, along with their stats, in order to make the trek a little bit easier. Players can choose from the warrior, who relies on heavy attacks, the magician, who has power over both mind and flames, and the hunter, with both a dagger and a gun, before selecting an area to explore, often traversing across forest spaces before running into a boss or happening across a store. They have three chances to revive and retry, but will have to start from the very beginning again if they fail. Ashen Forest may be a bit off-putting to those who can't break through the difficulty barrier, but it's worth sticking with if you like your roguelikes in various shades of grey. Number 7. West of Loathing Wild West-themed RPG West of Loathing is set in the Kingdom of Loathing universe, which was spawned by a browser-based game from 2003 and features a part fantasy, part western frontier setting. Though it looks very much like a discarded pen drawing from a particularly boring lecture, this title is a fantastic and in-depth comedic adventure. As the game opens, the player character is heading west after having left their family farm in search of riches on their way to the town of Frisco. 
in a time after a disaster known as the day the cows came home. As an RPG, there are three classes that players can choose from. The Snake Oiler, who is able to use their fast talking ways to get out of sticky situations, the Beanslinger, who is a master at both magic and cooking, or the straightforward Brawler, known as the Cow Puncher. On the stick cow person's journey, they will come into contact with a whole host of strange characters and locations, as well as groups of enemies who will have to be taken out with the game's turn-based combat system. Both West of Loathing and its sequel, the eldritch-themed and equally doodle-like Shadows Over Loathing, are a good laugh, whether you're in the mood for rooting and tooting or looking for a good old Cthulhu spooking. Number 6. Minute the world of Minute is a fast-paced and hectic one, as players have to work quickly in order to get anything done before the time limit runs out. This pixelated adventure game on a schedule starts with the duck-like player character waking up to discover a sword that is washed up on the shore. It turns out that this particular sword is cursed, and the holder will die every 60 seconds, which causes them to wake up in bed and continue the adventure from there. Soon, the player learns from the mailman that this isn't the first time this has happened, and that it is the fault of the sword factory. In order to reach this factory, the player will have to explore the seaside, desert and swamp in minute-long chunks, collecting goodies and information as they progress. Players will keep all items they have collected throughout each time loop, and are able to find new beds in each environment that will allow them to start farther into the adventure next loop, meaning they'll have a little less ground to cover on their next go. With its intriguing world, snappy gameplay and quirky art style, this one is worth checking out if you have a spare minute. Number 5. World of Horror It is true that you're able to pick from a huge range of colour palette options when you start World of Horror, making it a bit of a wild card entry. However, the default appearance is purely black and white, and so we're going to give it a pass. Also, no amount of colour will make these spooks more pleasant. With its panel-like layout and one-bit presentation, the game is very reminiscent of comics and manga, which is appropriate as one of the main inspirations is horror manga artist Junji Ito, alongside the ever-popular tales of HP Lovecraft and classic Japanese urban legends. World of Horror is a roguelike RPG set in the town of Shiokawa, which has been host to disturbing supernatural occurrences. Still in early access at the time of writing, and due for full release in mid-2023, players start by choosing one of several characters, all with various RPG stats such as knowledge and strength, and take on a series of investigations. As they explore the different locations in town, they will collect clues, weapons and items to help them purge the supernatural entities from existence. They have to be careful though, as if either their stamina or reason gets fully depleted, the game is over. No pressure, but humanity is relying on you. Number 4. Red Hot Vengeance At first glance, Red Hot Vengeance will look a lot like Hotline Miami without all of the psychedelic colours, apart from the bright red blood, and that's no surprise as it is one of the main influences alongside Max Payne. Red Hot Vengeance is a twin-stick shooter that follows the tale of a double-crossed hitman, and has quite a dark and violent story, featuring hand-drawn black, red and white cutscenes linking together the 10 levels of main campaign. As players progress, they will be able to unlock a variety of new weapons, each with their own unique behaviours and uses to help change up the gameplay. There are also medals to be earned for doing things such as completing challenges or finding secrets. Once these have been taken care of, players can then take on one of the 30 available challenge levels, which offer a completely different experience from the main campaign, with a more experimental design and objectives that can range from killing everything with a specific weapon to surviving an onslaught until the timer runs out. There's also a level editor, with no restrictions, and the ability to upload the creation for others to enjoy. Perhaps best of all, it's completely free. So if you're a fan of the genre, there's nothing keeping you from this one. Number 3. Downwell The vaguely roguelike vertical platformer Downwell is quite literal, as it follows someone who is going down a well. Specifically, the story follows Well Taro, who is at the local park one night when he decides that he wants to explore the nearby well. Knowing that there are monsters down there, he straps on some gun boots and starts downwards, killing enemies as he goes in order to both get them out of the way and to collect the treasure that they drop. 
The game is very arcade-like in its presentation, with only the red highlights throughout the journey differentiating it from early titles such as Space Invaders. The levels are procedurally generated with enemies that can be stomped on, or shot if they're especially strong. The gun boots reload every time while Taro lands on a surface, and occasionally he'll come across time voids that can freeze everything outside of them as players collect the gems, weapons, health or ammo upgrades that are found within, or buy things from the shop. The well has multiple stages, each with three levels, as well as different environmental designs and enemies, and the end of each gives a player their choice of upgrades or occasionally shop purchases. It can be tough reaching the end, but it's well worth trying. Number 2. Limbo Popular spooky adventure Limbo is probably one of the first games that came to mind when you heard the premise of this list and that's for good reason. This puzzle platformer, with its strong reliance on physics and a pervasive eerie atmosphere that is emphasised by a foggy and ominous mood created by its black and white aesthetic, is a memorable one that sticks in the minds of everyone who plays it, much like the horrible glowworms that take control of the player character at various points. The game follows a nameless boy as he runs and platforms his way through the world on a mission to save his sister. The environment hides an incredible number of traps and surprises, making the walk through the game quite a precarious one as he tries to dodge the foes that are lurking in the shadows, such as other horrible humans, and even more horrible, massive yet somehow still spindly spiders. The title of the game may give you some idea where this melancholy story ends, but Limbo is a beautifully crafted experience that is well worth playing. And number one, Return of the Obra Din. The adventure puzzle game Return of the Obra Din will test players' deduction skills as they explore the eponymous ship and try to figure out what exactly happened there. Set in 1807, players take on the role of an East India Company insurance inspector who's been tasked with looking into the mysterious reappearance of the Obra Din, a merchant ship that was lost five years previously before suddenly reappearing with all members of its 60-strong crew dead or missing. As players progress through the ship, they have to reconstruct the events and sort out the fates of the poor unfortunate souls, providing their names, location and the cause of death, or where the crew member may be if they're still alive. This is done with the Memento Mortem, a pocket watch that can transport the user to the past crime scene, allowing players to track who was present, what may have been happening elsewhere on the ship at the time, and note any important details. The art is heavily inspired by the print style of the time period, with not only the logbook but the entire game's presentation being reminiscent of contemporary pamphlets and printed media and their lithographic imagery. With its unique style and gameplay, Return of the Obra Din is sure to delight any mystery fan.